Welcome to the Neo Joe Chuan Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. Uh, this week we continue our discussion on the Yang style family uh, Tai Chi Chuan. We now turn to the sons of Yang Lu Chan, the founder, uh, his two sons, Ban Ho and Chin Ho. Uh, this is the second generation of the Yang family, so we take a look at a couple of their stories. Uh, then we turn back to the Tai Chi classics from Baiwa's book, and we look at the next uh, portion of that. Uh, and then in our Patreon, we continue our discussion on the Guiyan Ne Gong system, which is Baiwa's Ne Gong, uh, as expressed through the 100 character tablet of Lu Dong Bin. So this week we talk a little bit more about Lu Dong Bin as an individual and his legacy. Uh, so I hope you check that out. hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks for all your support and take care. Welcome to the Ninja Chuan Podcast with Isaac and Jess. Today, we're going to take a look at two great Tai Chi masters, the sons of Yang Luchan, the founder of the style. Um, so a couple of his sons made big... Uh, big waves when they when they were out in the martial arts world and so their names come down in history and i'm going to read a biography from combat techniques of taiji shingy and bagua by lu sheng li um so the first is the uh is one of the sons of yang luchan yang banho so he's born 1837 and lives till 1892 so he doesn't even make it to the boxer rebellion which is interesting so he's all he's all before that time during the heyday of Chinese martial arts, it says Yang Banho received his education and learned basic Gong Fu in Wu Yusheng's home when he was young and then practiced intensively with his father, Yang Luchan. You may remember from last time we talked about Wu Yusheng, uh, kind of Yang Luchan's first student, and he was the one responsible for finding the classics of the style, uh, the classical writings. Um, so I guess this Yang Luchan sent his son to learn from him initially. When his Gong Fu became good, he was made an instructor in the camp of the Emperor's security guard. He became famous for his fighting techniques and beat many famous masters, some of whom died in the process. His favorite punching technique was Ban Lan Chui. So that's pretty sick. He was using Ban Lan Chui to kill his uh, opponents in challenge matches. So step up parry and punch is, in Tai Chi is where you sort of advance, cover with one hand, and then punch with a... It's not too different from a Xing Yi Bung Chuan. I was or, just going to uh, say it's almost yeah. it's identical. It is right, so basically it's a vertical fist. Yeah, basically it's a body punch. So this guy was crushing people with a you know punch <laughs> to the ribs or you know something. Yeah, so you sort of swipe down their top hands and punch low, and then probably punch high after that. Nice technique. It says uh, more about Yang Ban Ho because of his mean and jealous disposition. However, Yang Ban Ho was not well liked. Even when he taught, he beat people very hard. Not surprisingly, he did not attract many students, and for the most part, his skills were not passed down. He was wary by nature and did not like to show his skill. Fortunately, he was not successful in his many attempts to dissuade his father from teaching high-level techniques to numerous dedicated students for many years. So it sounds like he was kind of jealous, too. He didn't want his dad teaching the martial arts to the other people. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think that sometimes people get a bad rap for being grumpy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that's like Mogwi had a similar uh. reputation and, you know, that that is a sort of sometimes attributed to some of these guys that the the less friendly ones generally right, less don't friendly ones. don't get as many students because you know it just sort yeah of doesn't lend itself yeah. to and there's the other famous uh but i should add they're Bobby. also almost always the best ones the best the group, one. right? <laughs> the, the, old, the grumpy guys that are like ah leave me alone well, I mean, I, it makes you wonder a little because like this is the 1870s when human life was fairly inexpensive so like if you had to get a reputation for being cruel and harsh 
you know, you had that's saying yeah. something for a yeah. cruel and harsh era. You know, but it, I mean, out. we you know we had the same thing in the West. You know, we were like the Billy the Kid or you know the guys like yeah, that. You know, tough, sort of sort of tough the, ass guys. Yeah, they, they were tough and they would kill you, but really, you know, deep down, you know, they were maybe had a heart of gold, <laughs> right? And it's that sort of thing. Like, but yeah, you're right. That's kind of a gunslinging era. This is so after the Civil War, 1870s. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost parallel the timeline. You know, right? A seriously violent era in North America america as well <laughs> mm -hmm. so now i wanted to pull a little bit about uh, a little bit more about young bon ho from chen wei ming's taiji sword translated by barbara davis here it says uh yang luchan taught the techniques of taiji chen to his sons bon ho and jian ho he had very high expectations of them day and night he supervised them and urged them on the two were not equal to the task one wanted to escape the other wanted to hang himself both were stopped when, when found out However, even though they were not yet 20 years old, they both became experts at boxing and their reputations shook up the capital, which is yeah. a cool way of putting it. Like these guys were getting known on the streets. Um, that's one, one of the reasons it's attributed to why he softened it up. I right? wonder, the, yeah. The why the Yang style eventually mm -hmm. became so different from the Chen style is that mm. um, this sort of, he learned this lesson of, oh, you know, you can't, force people to learn to be soft mm. right so master yang luchan himself cooled off all right and so that that's on, as yeah. the as the generations went down they kind of eased up on the you know don't lock your kids in a closet and make them do tai chi right. kind of thing, and beat you know? them to make them do <laughs> tai chi of all things <laughs> relax bam relax bam you know Which is like, i mean yeah but at the same time you got to think that like it was that harsh reputation that got them into the palace and now, and they're shaking up this capital because they're winning so many matches and you can't I, do that if you're not, you know, pushed I, pretty hard. Yeah. I mean, generally people that, you know, make a name for them as fight themselves as fighters or, you know, come from fairly rough beginnings yeah. because right? yeah. You know, forged in fire as it goes right. right you know you don't right you don't go into fighting as a as an occupation unless you're from poverty usually most people given the um you know i mean i would say probably 95 98 percent of the population given the uh, you know the right. alternative of would you like to have a job where you make lots of money <laughs> and your body is not broken or have a you know job where you very well might die and you don't get paid that well. Right. You know, it's like which one are you going to choose? It's not right? the most popular job. It, it, it you know so yeah people do it for other reasons, but I mean I, as far as that goes, it's like you know it's not a career path that a lot of people choose. Right. And also here it mentions that they were not yet twenty years old, meaning whatever age they were at a young age they were already well. So it's not like Tai Chi takes until you're eighty years old before you can finally use it. Right. So a prince heard of them and engaged Yang Ban Ho to lodge at his home and teach. Every month he was presented with a remuneration of 40 jin, which must have been a lot. He was highly respected. Well, there's that connection again to some sort of royalty or, you know, upper yeah. class, right? That kind of Royal, literally royalty, a prince. Having yeah. uh, the protection and patronage mm -hmm. of someone like that, you know, I think is a big yeah. part of why these guys were able to do it. I mean, because... there must have been a lot of money in the palace for martial artists like yeah I think bagua and all these other like, styles were there too you know there was probably a martial arts research you know uh part of the right you know, i think that was their department well they say you know. sometimes like the manchurians were very fond of martial arts so when they took control of china they at the palace there were always martial artists coming in and out it was like it was one of their favorite activities yeah i mean but it was, it was also a popular stretch there up until firearms came on the scene right it was you That's wanted awesome. to have the you wanted to have the best martial artists around because you know you wanted to be able to kick the shit out of whoever tried to mess with you. Right. So so it was kind of like from the pro point of view of martial artists, it was the best gig you could get pay wise and prestige wise. Right. And then from the point of view right. of the palace, it was like, well, we get the best fighters, you know, mm -hmm. and even you know, in some sense get the the worst of the worst off the street put them in the palace <laughs> right right and your it's sort of be, close you know, if you keep your enemies closer kind of right. thing right right and they so, can't I mean, have a revolt if they're working for you and getting paid <laughs> right it's harder you know, people they won't want to revolt if they're getting right. paid is part of it too you, you got know? them on, yeah so it goes both directions yeah so so at the palace a mr lee i forgot his name practiced ua style freehands ua jia san show 
Yeah, yeah, that's the UAFA style. Yep. He had some hundreds of pounds of strength and taught more than a thousand students. There was someone who was provoking ill will between him and Yang Ban Ho. Ban Ho was prideful. He heard these things and thought they were not fair. The two men, therefore, made a date to have a contest at a certain location on the east side of the city. In a short while, the news spread all over Beijing. A crowd of thousands came to watch. The two men arrived at the grounds. This Liu put out his hand and grasped Yang Ban Ho's wrist. Ban Ho used intercepting force to shake him off, which is Jie here mm-hmm. in parentheses. Liu fell and he left embarrassed. It was because of this incident that Ban Ho's reputation grew. So it sounds like he used uh, G, G, uh Pong Liu Ji on, as, a, as it's commonly right, called. Right, right, the, right. So how would you describe that technique? That's where your hand, I mean, it's a forward attack. Sort of like Pichon yeah. and Ching Yi, yeah. where your palm or hand right? shoots it's like, out. You, the, the, you sort of break in there. You know, As they're coming at you, you cut through their force, right? Mm. This is that intercepting fist type of... So you take a little angle and deflect them as you strike straight in. Yeah, I mean, my guess is it probably was something like, you know, brushing your board off, you know, and just kind of knock the guy over. And... But Maybe yeah, knocked I mean, him off the lay tie. He fell and left embarrassed, so he won the match with that. It sounds like, you know, it's a t- typical Tai Chi thing, right? You You... you don't hurt the person you humiliate the person right? <laughs> like they, they don't you don't have to hit them if they just fall on their face right like and also i like to point out that the the contests of the time were you know traditional chinese fighting's done on a lay tie which is a big raised platform off the ground which it could be a foot off the ground or it could be a couple feet off the ground so tai chi is kind of perfect for that because you're you're deflecting and shoving especially with Peng liu ji on those four techniques are great for sort of just smothering attacks and shoving somebody sumo style or getting an angle and pulling them across and flinging them off. So like you don't necessarily need fist techniques in a, in a combat situation like that. Well, I mean, you, you could still use fists. They should sure work mean, great. But, yeah, but yes, I mean, I, I think the thing is you could, whether you're going to punch them, push them, kick them, throw them, right. The thing you don't want is them to push you off of the, right the platform right so that's where the idea of rooting and mm. you know all this sinking and not you know yielding stuff comes mm. in really handy when you're in that type of situation yeah exactly exactly and i think people will say oh push hands is bullshit because all you do is push the person well for a lay tie fight pushing somebody's probably your best technique your less chance yeah, of breaking I your mean, fist punching them or whatever like it's and and you know the, the um uh frank allen's line about pushing is yeah well what if you push them into a bus <laughs> right. that's a very new york approach like, well but that's the idea right is it's like you're you're not it's not that you're pushing them into the air you push them into In, something right you know like so it, you know it's not you that's hurting them it's the ground or the right you know bus that they're, they're going in. off a cliff yeah, yeah. yeah. that's like or in this case yeah they're just falling off a platform right. right so when it says he fell it's not like necessarily just right in front like he you know he went off the thing i think that yeah it's like spelled several feet probably yeah so uh yang bon ho went home to see his father yang luchan i mean it's kind of like well sorry but i just gonna yeah yeah, it's it's like professional wrestling right like you know how they part of this part of the spectacle is the the falling out you know getting knocked out of the ring and that's right right that's then the crowd jumps up because you you don't need a ref if you have a lay tie you don't need a referee it's like whoever goes off and hits the right, ground first a, is the yeah. loser. There's a very sort of clear definitive right. end to it. Right. So you can't pay off the ref. Like this is, it's, it's late time. All right. So just to finish the story, Yang Ban Ho went home to see his father, Yang Luchan. Ban Ho was overjoyed and proud of himself. He recounted how he had hit Liu. His father laughed sarcastically and said, you fought well, yet half your sleeve was torn off. Oh. Should this be regarded as Taiji Chuan's gene? Ban Ho heard these words and examined the sleeve himself. Sure enough, it was torn. He left downcast. He said, when Liu grasped my wrist, it was like a dog biting me. So it sounds like Liu of uh, Yue Jia Sancho had a pretty grip, a good grip of his own. Well, that is, yeah, I mean, Eagle Claw, Yue Jia Sancho. Oh, they've they got, got that the grip. Um, so maybe he held on to the sleeve as he was falling off the platform and ripped on his way down. Kind of something like yeah, that. but I, I mean, to me, the, the funny part of that is just sort of the, like, you know, 
overbearing dad kind of the attitude of, you know just like oh you're still not good enough you know <laughs> like, right he's bragging about it and his dad's like just stomps him yeah, yeah fatherhood in those days was probably not as a friendly but as his encouragement days. wasn't a big part no. of their parenting style i don't think in the young it's family still not well, another one about young bonho Although the Young brothers were were known widely for their boxing skills, they were reserved and did not reveal their abilities. They were particularly good at nourishing their chi and didn't have intentions of aspiring to be the best. In their daily life, they were ordinary, modest, and extraordinarily restrained. Those who didn't know better thought the Youngs couldn't make the grade. However, as we know, the wisest person looks dumb, and the most valiant seem cowardly. That is, they have no need to show off. Truly, one cannot judge people by their appearances. So that speaks to that idea in Tai Chi of being somewhat unassuming. It's, you know, some of the, like, say, William C.C. C. Chen in New York or whatever, even at his heyday, he's a little over 100 pounds, very slim. But, you know, he was, he could box quite well using Tai Chi in the ring. So you never know. Uh, when Tai Chi, they don't necessarily look like badasses. And I, yeah, it goes to the thing you always talk about, of Tai Chi having that, that air of sort of, uh, you know, upper class yeah this to it that, there's some elegance there and some yeah morality and uprightness you know so yeah so they're just kind of trying to live that sort of um noble life yeah thing, yeah i just, mean and they're getting paid at the palace so yeah, yeah you're not yeah. gonna you're, you're probably wearing really nice clothes you're not just getting drunk and you know party brawling in the streets brawling right? in the streets right <laughs> So one year, a Southerner came to pay his respects to young Bon Ho, who was already 60 at the time. The Southerner had the intention of conveying the utmost admiration. I've heard that your Taiji Chuan Jin, sir, is wondrous, and it's as sticky as glue and sap, and keeps the opponent from getting away. I wish to understand your teachings. Bon Ho said, I barely have the sketchiest knowledge of what my forebears practice or of their teachings. How could it would be that I have this Gong Fu? He insisted that he would not teach him. The Southerner made his request again and again. Please, Bon Ho then said, please forgive me, sir. You must be skilled at this. How can an old decrepit man like me be a match for you? Please show me the methods. I don't know if I'll be able to follow you. Okay, so. Uh, uh, <laughs> so the the foreigner proposes a contest where they, you know, their feet can't touch the ground as they step on the bricks and your hand must not leave my back. Whoever, whosoever's foot hits the ground or hand leaves the other's back loses. Yan Bon Ho said, this will make me dizzy. I fear that it's not something an old decrepit man like me can do. Nevertheless, since I undertake to consult you, how dare I not do as told? So they sounds, set up the... Sounds yeah. kind of like a judo posture thing, right? Yeah, where yeah. Got, one, where you yeah, got like one hand on the guy. Each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got like one hand on his shoulder and you're sort of grabbing each other. Okay, you know? yeah, that makes sense. I and think. they're supposed I mean, to stand on the bricks while they do it. Yeah. So that's uh, wobbly, obviously. The southerner got up first, stepping slowly and calmly. Bon Ho gathered his chi and concentrated. Stride for stride, he did not leave the southerner's back. They went around several times. The southerner was light like a swallow and gradually sped up like a flying wheel. Yang Bon Ho used his art of flying upward, moving like the wind follows lightning. And as before, he didn't lose even the slightest bit of contact. The southerner had no way to shake Bon Ho off, so he suddenly leaped onto the wall. He looked down back at the courtyard and not seeing any trace of Bon Ho was very surprised. But he didn't know that Bon Ho was still right behind him. Yang Bon Ho touched him on the back and said, Sir, you are evil to do something so strenuous to exhaust an old decrepit man. Why don't we go down and rest for a while? The hmm. southerner couldn't help but be astonished, and he was won over. They established friendly relations, and then he left. So there you go. So he was a nice guy at the end of the day. <laughs> so those are uh, some of the stories of Yang Bon Ho. So next, let's return to uh, the Taiji Chen classics in the book, uh, Uncovering the Secrets of Internal Power in Taiji Chen by, uh, ba by Bai Hua. So he ga he's gathered together some of the Tai Chi classics here and comments on each of them. Um, the, next, the next line he comments on is, all actions come from inner E, mind, not from outside. So that's a very internal martial arts quote. Because all the internal martial arts talk a lot about e mind, which is in the in the word xing yi. It's literally yeah. I mean, you know, it's in tai chi is a lot with the e as well. It's it's usually better translated as intent, right? That 
It's it's a mm. conscious mind. It's not. It's just, your conscious active mind. Your thinking right. mind, maybe. Yeah. It, it, it's not you know because because um, mind is a very you know amorphous term, right? It's it's specifically referring to the part of your mind that can direct action, right? Not the unconscious mind or the feeling mind that can kind of sense what's happening inside of you. That there's a part. There's a piece of your mind that can just you know do and this is what why xing yi right the e in xing yi is about mm. making your mind go somewhere it's not just kind of having a mind mm. right because you could have a mind it's a mind moving forward it's not yeah it's not a static mind it's like right but it's, it's active also, but it's a continuous unbroken con- concentrated awareness right so i mean could you say there's different many different types of e your your e can yeah. take a million shapes well, you're, right, right but when you do internal martial arts there's this sort of calm e that you're trying but to no, cultivate no. Yeah, yeah, yeah once you have the e kind of i mean if this is a very sort of hard strange thing to put into words but once you've trained your mm. intent right to do and that's the way it was always put to me. You make make it so that your mind, when your mind says do, your body does, basically, right? That's that's your E. Not because there's like you said, there, it can do other things. It can it can be applied to lots of different stuff. But right. in terms of when you're move when you're talking about body, right? The, the E is the thing that says, because that's what this is, right? It's referring to moving. So, you know, the E is the thing that says, uh, you know, hand go up, right? Yeah. And, and there's a momentary gap, right, between when you think that and when it happens, mm-hmm. right? And so what you're working on with strengthening your E or your Shing is the body, right? So Shing Yi is your body has to, or your mind it has to connect to your body so that whatever your mind says, your body does it almost instantly, right? Um so the 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 time between the thought and the action, right? That's what you're working on when you practice. So you're you have to have the thought first, right? So you don't just randomly move your arms, you know, sort of, or not randomly, but you don't just sort of unconsciously sort of wave your arms around. Mm-hmm. You have from the very beginning of the form your your conscious you know, unbroken awareness is on what you're doing. It's not hap- you know, it's not intermittent. And that's, right. that's what E is in terms of movement. It's like, it's got to be this constant, unbroken, unwavering mm, awareness. Presence, yeah. yeah. So in Tai Chi, I mean, do you think Tai Chi E is any different from, I mean, because a lot of these classics, and especially his commentary on it, seem like they could apply to Xing Yi Bagua and Tai Chi somewhat equally. But I'd say each of them develops the E a little bit differently. But there is a, as long as it's continuous and connected and present, that'll do for any of them. Right. Well, they don't really tell you how to develop it Mm. in a lot of these things. They just say you have to have it, right? I mean, that's that's the problem with trying to get (laughs) this stuff from a book is it's just going to say something like, you know, the mind moves the body, right? and you have to figure out, well, how do you do that? And that's right. what, you know, that's what you learn in Nagong and stuff. But, right. but the, you know, again, just the training of the mind, right? That's that's always the way it was put to me. So it is the most obvious in Xingyi because that's their primary thing is the E. So mm. the, the practice in Santi of just looking at your finger and, you know, breathing is how you strengthen that E. Mm. It's something like Tai Chi. You're still going to be doing that. It's just not as directly a overt practice, right? It's going to be happening while you move. So, so you develop the the E in San T by kind of not moving, but you develop it in Tai Chi by slowly moving and keeping your mind connected from move to move is how you're going to start developing that E presence and. Sort of yeah, I general mean, awareness. The theory that I was, you know, told is that Tai Chi originally was just thirteen static postures, mm-hmm. right? 
So Tai Chi at one point, what had a method of holding postures the way Xing Yi had a holding postures. Mm. And it was probably done more like Xing Yi where it was um, sets of li- you know line movement, line mm-hmm. drills, right? So yeah. like if you think of Brush Knee or Repulse right. Monkey, those are those are ones that sort of made it into the long form, right? Right, right. But that... And each one of those little chunks was a sequence that you would do as an application. Right. right? You just do pung left, pung right, right pung right. left, pung exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, and then at some point they put it all in a sequence because it looks better that way. Um, but you know, that, that in more, you know, most modern Tai Chi, they don't do a lot of holding postures, but that is how you do it is you just yeah. would hold, like, hold single whip or hold yeah. word off posture for you know yeah now. it's pretty common yeah i know it's a good thing i would, it's so, uh, something just occurred to me i was thinking like you could develop e and stand you know and shingy santi by not moving you can do it in tai chi with slow moving you do it in bagua with medium to fast movement those right, would well, be sort of their each domain of their own kind of so what what shingy does standing still tai chi does moving real slow right, bagua does slow. walking essentially right so and up to super fast and and yeah once you can stably walk the faster you go it's like the stronger the, the e gets it's, the faster you go it's yeah. the opposite of tai chi that you know yeah. that, that if you wanted to get it make the thing harder in tai chi you move slower mm-hmm. if you want to make it harder in bagua oh, you go make faster. go faster and shing yi i don't know how much harder you can make it if you can stand on one leg for 20 minutes Shing, well yeah without Shing-Yi, collapsing you know just stand is, longer yeah shing yi is you stand longer basically right. or you stand in more difficult postures i mean it's yeah it's, you know, sure you, stand in dragon posture for a while it's yeah yeah or, your or, mind starts to shake um just the post, the little chicken posture where your feet uh-huh. are, you know, together and mm-hmm. one foot's off the ground. You know, try holding Base, that. Yeah. Try holding that for twenty minutes. You know, right. not put not we'll putting your finish. your foot on the ground where one you know one foot's just an inch off the floor, but it's that's you know torture. that it starts to get to well, you. Well, that's kind of the genius of having all three as part of your school because you can any per, you know whichever one works for you is the one you can pick. So you've got three different ways you could follow this path, and that's kind of cool. Like it's good to have those options because not everyone can handle do it in in Tai Chi where it's that slowness is just like nails on a chalkboard, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, as far as that goes, I think it, it's the most useful piece of it is that it can be a progression out throughout your life. Mm. Right. That, um, when you're young, Mm. You can use Shingy to really strengthen your body. And as Bruce puts it, build up your Chi bank account. Right. Then in your, let's say, 30s to 50s, you can do things like Bagua and more sort of, you know, uh, young, ex, you know, big, tight, fast Tai Chi stuff, you know, the more aggressive Tai Chi stuff, mm-hmm. pushing hands, you know, really getting into the martial stuff of Tai yeah. Chi. Um, but, you know, when you hit like 50, 60, 70, and beyond, you know, the main thing you're going to be wanting to do is, you know, improve the quality of your life. So that's where the stuff like the the, the Tai Chi thing and, you know, the softer side of Bagua is probably going to be more beneficial than just doing a bunch of, you know, martial arts. Even Xing Yi has a thing where you get to eventually doing it fairly soft. But, you know, that takes a... It, it's a long longer you know to right get to that that's point. the end of the road that that's when you're in your 60s and 70s you can soften it up to make it more like tai chi or you could just practice tai chi i mean right that that's where i think once you kind of get the thing that they're all internal based on the same internal principles and it's just different containers it's like all the principles that you're going to do in Tai Chi or somewhere in Xi and they're somewhere in Bagua. It's just different proportions, you know? And, mm. and so like, if you look at a lot of people that do Bagua and as they get older, it gets a lot smoother and sort of lighter and, you know, mm. like same with Tai Chi, you know, Chen style Tai Chi guys tend to get a little bit lighter because, you know, they're just not going to be as, you know, doing all that smashing and t- shaking and stuff as much. Doesn't really, you know, when you're 70, probably feel that great. 
right know, as opposed to doing something slow and steady and smooth that just kind of keeps everything um even right i yeah. mean and that that's really the the reason tai chi is so excellent as a health practice no matter what your age is is it's primary thing is getting all the systems of the body to run smoothly and to balance right hmm. the primary thing in shingi is to get power right and the primary thing in bagua is to be able to change so those are different skills so it's kind of like you know different things for different times in your life right, but also but also different situations hmm. and, and so that's why i think when you and read, different personality types some definitely people are, right yeah, i yeah. mean like if you're running a school for sure like you could say to someone like you should not do shit right do that. but that's that's more i mean you got to be really personalized at that point but yeah. i i think it also just gives people a um it's like tasting different flavors of you know ice cream or something it's mm-hmm. like you might have a preference for chocolate over vanilla but totally. just, you know you still like them both it's like yeah every once in a while you try you'll have a little strawberry here and there yeah but it's not your main thing and and just to finish this thought up that that leo leo hong jay's thing was you know use the one that you felt was sort of the most appropriate for how mm-hmm. you felt at that moment right mm-hmm. so that like using shingy as your warm-up to get your chi to really you know get strong right then using tai chi to smooth things out when you get agitated mm. right? or using bagua to you know stir things up when things get a little stagnant right you have mm. each one kind of has their own sort of thing that they do best right so you can kind of use that thing for that tool or if you just practice one you have to figure out how to slightly change what you're doing and that that's where it's like you know my personal preference is to have a different art that that you know does the other thing rather than Mm. try to do the same thing in the same art or different things in the same art yeah yeah it's just like keeps it separate you know the the one of the things that uh, Bruce always emphasized, you know, is if you're doing one, do that one. If you're right. doing the other, do that one. And that goes don't, for every martial art. Yeah, don't mix and match, you know, it, when you're practicing. When you right. fight, you do whatever. But Yeah, you don't have but, much of a choice. Then you just pull everything right. out. But, but, but don't, you know, don't do a Bagua technique in your Tai Chi form because it's easier for you. Right. Mm-hmm. You're, you're missing out on what that art has to offer. Right, right, right. And you know, the the other way it goes the same thing the other way, right? Don't you know, don't do your Bagua like Tai Chi because it's you know easier for you. Do it as best you can, like Bagua Zhang, so you get what Bagua Zhang does, and you know, it's just kind of like otherwise, what's the point, right? Like just practice one of them. Right. So Bai Hua ends his discussion of this particular line uh, with a final paragraph. He says, The requirements of Tai Chi Chuan are all controlled internally and are not just the external postures and movements. So although the development of Tai Chi has been based on various historical conditions of the times and several factions with different appearances have arise, their content is all the same and must all meet the above requirements. Basically, again, repeating... The classics are what defines Tai Chi, not any particular style. So right. And whether you have double weighted, you know, single whip or not, like it's still Tai Chi. Yeah. And I think what he's saying is that the, the different external forms of Tai Chi, Yang, Wu, Chin, are all still Tai Chi. You know, that the, the, the outside may have changed due to certain conditions and whatever, but inside it's still the same all right see you next time yep take care justin all right hey folks uh thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed the episode uh check out the patreon for the uh guion ne gung portion which uh goes into more depth on some of the concepts we touch on here uh also we have our interview with uh bruce francis and others so you might want to listen to those And check us out on Instagram for images to go along with the episodes. All right. Thanks again for listening. Be well.